final horn has sounded. And today's game is complete. Time now for Cougar Post Game Live on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. Cougar Post Game Live is presented by America First Credit Union. Whatever financial products and services you need to take care of yourself, your family, or your business, America First is here to help. Cougar Post Game Live is also brought to you by First Colony Mortgage, your trusted lender for all your mortgage needs. Visit firstcolonymortgage.com. Now, here's your host, Jason Shepard. BYU gets the win tonight, 95-67 over the Portland Pilots. Before we get into Cougar Post Game Live any further, let's pause 10 seconds for station identification. This is BYU Basketball on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. This is BYU Radio on KBYU-FM HD2 Provo. You are listening to BYU Basketball on BYU Radio. Fans, remember when the Cougars win, you win with Papa John's Pizza. Use the online promo code BYU50, that's BYU50, at PapaJohns.com tomorrow, and you'll receive 50% off pizza at any Utah location. Cougars get the win. They are now 3-1 and one in West Coast Conference play. They are also now 12-3 and three overall. Nice win for the Cougars, winning this one going away big time second half. And what a game for Matt Harms. 23 points, 9 of 9 from the field, 1 of 1 from 3, 4 of 4 from the free throw line. You can't get any better than that. Also had 6 rebounds, 1 assist in 21 minutes of play. He was stellar tonight for BYU. Let's get to other action tonight. This game wrapping up in Ogden. In fact, 27 seconds to go. Weber State's going to get the victory over Southern Utah. Wildcats with a 91-67 to lead over the T-Birds again with 27 seconds to go in that one. So you can chalk that one up as a victory for the Weber State Wildcats. The University of Utah in Pullman, Washington tonight taking on Washington State. They have reached halftime, and Utah has a 43-26 lead over the Cougars in red. Coming up in just a few minutes from Logan, Utah State will look to keep its winning streak alive. They are hosting Colorado State. That game is set to tip off in just a few minutes. West Coast Conference action. One game going on, and it is at halftime in Santa Clara. San Francisco, the team that BYU beat most recently over the weekend on Saturday, they have a two-point lead over the Broncos. It is 23-21 in favor of the Dons after 20 minutes. Other finals from tonight, Pepperdine defeats Pacific 85-68, and St. Mary's improves to 1-3 and three in conference play. They get their first conference win on the road at LMU tonight, 65 65- Two sixty one in top twenty five action. The only game still going on is under a minute to go, and it's Indiana on its way to an upset of number four Iowa Hoosiers with a ten point lead at seventy three sixty three. And then a final tonight, number twenty four UCLA gets the win at Cal sixty one to fifty seven. Whatever financial products and services you need to take care of yourself, your family, or your business, America First is here to help. To find out more, visit AmericaFirst.com today. Coming up next, we'll get you our three-point recap. Quite the night for the BYU Cougars from the perimeter. Plus, we'll update you on the Utah Jazz game and the rest of the National Basketball Association. Cougars victorious tonight at home over the Pilots. Your final score, BYU 95, Portland 67. More Cougar Post Game Live next on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. Here's Jason Shepard with more Cougar Post Game Live on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. Your final tonight from Provo, BYU 95, Portland 67. Welcome back into Cougar Post Game Live. It's time for the Mountain America three point recap for each three pointer BYU makes. Mountain America will donate $50 to the American Red Cross. Tonight, BYU hit 14 threes for a total of $700. That is the second most threes that BYU has hit this season. The most was right out of the gate against Westminster when they hit 18. But 14 threes tonight, $700. That brings the total donations for the season to $6,400. Checking in on the NBA, the Utah Jazz 
in action tonight, taking on the New Orleans Pelicans, the second game against the Pels for the Jazz. It is 56-52, New Orleans with a four-point lead, but that's actually pretty good news for the Jazz because it wasn't uh, that long ago in this game. They were down 16, so they fought back to within four. Brandon Ingram leading the way for New Orleans with 16. Donovan Mitchell leading the way for the Jazz with 15. And by the way, uh, the post-game player interview uh, in just a moment is going to be with Matt Harms, who did hit one of those threes. Uh, They've put a graphic up on the television broadcast tonight that Matt Harms says his favorite NBA player is Jazz center Rudy Gobert. We got to make that introduction happen. There's 45 miles uh, difference. Zoom. We we got to get those two to, to to meet. That would be pretty cool, I assume, for Matt Harms. That's assuming he hasn't already met him already. Elsewhere in the NBA, the Knicks uh, leading the Golden State Warriors 55 to 50. And then earlier tonight, LeBron and the Lakers get the win over Giannis and the Bucks 113 to 106. That's a wrap for Cougar Post Game Live. After the break, we'll get you back to the Marriott Center for the Cougar Locker Room Show with Matt Harms. Your final from Provo. BYU gets it's the win, 95-67, and you heard it all right here on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. Our exclusive postgame coverage continues with the Cougar Locker Room Show. Stops on the arc left and hands to Lee. Lee will try the three and score it! Colby Lee for three! The Cougar Locker Room Show is presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. Now let's head back to the America First Credit Union courtside seats and join the voice of the Cougars, Greg Rubel. It is time now for our America First Credit Union courtside interview. Tonight we're talking with Matt Harms. It's brought to you by America First Credit Union, here to help. To find out more, visit AmericaFirst.com today. Matt with a BYU career high, 23 points tonight, 9 for 9 from the field and made a 3. And let's start with that. It feels like after you made that 3, you kind of raised your arms to the bench. Like, you know I can still make this shot, guys, right? <laughs> if it had been a little while. It was good to see that go for you. All right. Uh, last one was, I don't even remember, maybe against <laughs> USC. That might have been the last one. It, it was a while ago. I remember that. I was just, it, oh, maybe Utah, Utah, State. State. Utah State. Yeah, Utah, Utah State. State. I went one for six that game. That was really fun, too. <laughs> uh, but it was fun to be able to hit one again. You know, it's uh, at that point I knew it was going in the second it left my hands. I knew there was no chance I was missing that. You know, it was just a really fun game. Um, that first half we're just going to forget about. Uh, but that second half was really fun. I think we did a really good job, you know, adjusting. Um, so just a really fun game tonight. You had some high percentage stuff, a lot of dunks for you tonight, and those come off nice passes. And passing was kind of the theme of the night uh, for this team, right? Uh, 28 assists on 36 makes. Season high in assists for the team at 28. That's awesome. You know, it's, it's such a core part of Coach Pope's philosophy every single night, every single day. You know, he's coming in there and says, don't take good shots, work hard for great shots. You know, that's he has. We have this big poster he gave to everyone, and it has like all of our like core tenets and like special things that we care about. And one of them is like that little sense. And it's just so important to what we do. You know, I think early we're kind of forcing a little bit, you know, just kind of going down in fast break. And their defense was kind of, kind of like bend, don't break was kind of their defense. Uh, and we were just kind of taking it a little bit too early. And then in the second half, I'm really proud of how the guys adjusted and just, you know, took what we wanted instead of what they were giving us. Well, Matt, congrats, man. That was fun to watch you. That was uh, the team played well, but you were just fantastic. I'm just curious, you know, watching film, getting ready for this game. Portland's uh, different than some of the teams you've faced, and uh, they played a lot of zone tonight. Was this a game, you're always looking to go inside, but was this a game the big guys were thinking, you know, we could really do some damage here, and that would seem to be a focus of the offense was getting it into you guys. Right. Uh, I think it's been the focus over the past couple games. Um, you know, definitely starting – probably earlier than the St. Mary's game even, uh, just kind of having to establish ourselves. You know, we were, we've were been playing so well, and we looked at the numbers, and our coaches kept telling us, like, you guys are the most efficient option we have, and you guys are just not being used enough, and that's not the guard's fault. You're like, you guys aren't posting hard, not rolling hard enough. So we got really got challenged uh, to step up to the plate there, uh, and I think the past couple of games we've done a really good job of that, you know, tonight as well, um, you know, against the zone, which is a little different. We haven't seen that much. So you and Kolb and Caleb and Rich, that's four guys, you combined to go 19 for 22 from the field tonight. Mm-hmm. Uh, is that who you are? Uh, I think, I mean, of course, that's that's going to be an anomaly. You're never going to shoot that well. Uh, you know, you're not going to do that every single night. Uh, but it's, I think it's where our game needs to start. Um, you know, just having that inside-out threat is, you know, it's, it's kind of old school, but it, it mm-hmm. really works for us. I think this is where this team identity is. You know, we're just kind of – Really grindy, you know, grinding teams out through the post, getting good shots. You know, if you want to double us, we saw it against San Francisco. We'll kick it out. We'll get great shots because we have those guys in perimeter who can make those shots. 
Uh, but I think establishing ourselves inside is really where we are. You know, 19 for 22 is an awesome mm-hmm. mark. We're not always going to get there. But high percentage shots inside is where we should be starting every single game. We talked about your three to start the interview, and the three came around for the, t- the entire team tonight. We knew it would, right? I mean, it, you'd been dipped a little bit from the three, but by the same token, you play the number one team in the country, and you play two of the best teams in the country at taking away the three. True. Probably a matter of time. Uh, and, again, not every night's going to be, you know, 42% or better from the three-point line, but this is kind of who you are, too. You've got good shooters. Right. I, mean, I think we have some of the best shooters in the country. Uh, you know, we haven't been able to play at home in a month. You know, yeah. it's a month to this day that we played our last home game. Um, so, it was going to come, you know, every time at home, of course, the basket's always a little bigger. Uh, so I knew that when this, you know, when this home game came, I didn't know when it was going to come about two weeks ago. I was like, will we ever play another home game? <laughs> right. Uh, but, you know, I knew that when this game was going to come, I knew we were going to get, you know, bang those shots whenever we got them. Well, Matt, I, I, I can't imagine. It's got to be difficult coming into a new program and become acclimated. But it seems like, I mean, it seems like you really fit in with this team and, and maybe in particular – that I see you guys in the shoot arounds and practice, you know, the big guys working together. It seems like you really have a great bond in, with the big guys. But maybe just talk about how you've been able to fit in with this team and the dynamic on this team. You know, I'll, I'll talk about the big guys here. And, you know, it's just guys that I, I love them so much, you know, and, and they've embraced me from day one. You know, instead of looking at it like, oh, this guy's coming to try to take my job, they've looked at it like this is another guy that's going to help us win. Uh, you know, of course, I really love – you know, if we were able to have Gavin back, you know, we really miss him. Uh, you know, we, of course, wish him a speedy recovery. Uh, but he's around, you know, we love him too. You know, he's a part of our, our little family too. Uh, but the bigs are definitely tight knit on this team, and I think that's really important. You know, every single game before the game, I shake Rich's hand and I tell him 16 minutes because he knows that's when he's coming in, and that's when he knows he gets to go to work. And, you know, the past against those two road games, it was like 11 minutes, but he knows. He knows that 16-minute media timeout, he's going in there and he's going to go to work. So I'm just so proud of those guys, you know, especially those two guys coming off the bench. Uh, you know, it's tough to come off the bench and bring that kind of energy, but they just do it every single night for us, and I'm just so proud of them. And they're, you know, we're our little six, eight, and above little family. We're a very big family, but it's only four of us. But, uh, uh, <laughs> speaking of the family of bigs, one of those bigs had a career high tonight uh, that was uh, assist. Uh, Caleb mm-hmm. Luner had six assists tonight. Yeah, uh, and I, I, he went out of the game. It was like six assists. Like, where did this come from? But I think he got one to me. Uh, he was just – he's been so good about working out in the post. You know, he's – he started out the season, uh, we were talking about it a few days ago, he started off his points per possession were like 0.3 or 0.4, and now he's all the way up to like a 1.1, 1, 1, 1. 1.2, which is insane for a freshman to just start mm-hmm. going through those numbers. So, you know, you know, for that, that means every single time he, he takes a shot or the possession ends with him, it's, it's 1.2 points, which is really good. Uh, so he's been playing with so much poise in the post and just so confident, so relaxed, and we're really proud of that. BYU as a team, by the way, since we're talking PPP, was 1.57 points per possession after halftime tonight as they pull away. We'll take a break. We'll conclude our conversation with Matt Harms after this on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. This is the Cougar Locker Room Show on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. Now back to the voice of the Cougars, Greg Grubel. Third straight win for BYU. Tonight's final score, 95-67 over Portland. Seventh straight game with 40 or more points in the paint for BYU. 42 points in the paint tonight. They were plus 20 in paint points over the Pilots. BYU basketball brought to you in part by Edge, by the way. At Edge, we sell pest control, knock doors, and love it. With your commitment and our managers, you will sell more and have an amazing experience. Join us. Check us out on social media at EdgeD2D or visit us online, EdgeD2D. Dot com. Matt Harms with us for another moment or two. Matt, uh, 23 points, BYU career high in BYU's win tonight. Uh, first conference game, Matt, without having to come back at halftime. You guys had a lead at the break, which was nice. Even though you didn't maybe say it was your best first half, you had a cushion and got to expand on that instead of coming back. Right. Uh, you know, like you said, I don't think we played our best basketball. I don't think we played close to any good basketball even in the first half. But just to come out with a lead is good. You know, there was a lot of frustration in that first half. Coach Pope talked about it, you know. But we love frustration because we turn it into fight. That's another one of those little taglines right there. I'm telling you, it's on that poster. I read it every day. That's why I, why I know them all. But, you know, that's what we do with our frustration. We turn it into fight. Uh, and I definitely think we did that in the second half. Coach Pope's trying to get your attention to tell you that you're second for the most field goals made in a row in a game Without with a the great Kresimir Chosic. Kresimir Chosic went 12 for 12, I think. And so most makes without a miss after Chosich is a 9-for-9 nine nine that he pulls off tonight. <laughs> Should have kept me in the game, Coach. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> he, he, coach is saying he had to get Matt out. To he was trying to protect me. He was trying to protect me from the miss. I understand. Thank you, Coach. <laughs> I think Coach Pope realizes that he doesn't have a microphone. That's okay. We'll, 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 we'll get his good stuff here in a minute, for real. <laughs> Let me ask about that, though, because I'm looking. I mean, 23 points in just 21 minutes. That's that's incredibly efficient. And I know you probably want more minutes, but it seems like this one of the real strengths of this team is that you're playing 11 guys, 12 guys, and everybody coming and contributing, getting minutes. That That's amazing that, that you're that deep. Right. I mean, everyone wants to play 40 minutes, of course. You know, every single guy is in the back of their head is like, oh, I want to play 40 minutes and I want to take all the shots. But that's another thing Coach Pope just emphasizes every single day. He's like, we're doing this as a team, you know, like set aside your own personal agenda. There's another one of those. <laughs> I'm like a quote machine over here. Like, I'm just a pope. I'm just regurgitating pope quotes. Uh, but, you know, he, he says it every day. Set, your own, set aside your own personal agenda for this team and we're going to come out the best we are. And he's saying it's it's not about scoring the ball. It's not about, you know, putting up 20 shots every single night it's about winning uh and that's i think a lot of guys have done a great job you know it's really hard there's always people talking to you to just saying you know you should do this you should do this but i think all these guys have done a great job of just trusting the coaching staff and just listening to what they say and just just to set aside that personal agenda and put the best product on the court okay so three and one start in league at 12 and three through 15 games first of all getting 15 games in is an accomplishment right then to win 12 of the 15 with kind of a new group coming together i'm sure you guys are are proud of what you've been able to accomplish so far. Right. And, of course, you know, that uh, that Boise one at home always that came down to the end there, and those other two, of course, weren't as close. Um, but, you know, those those three losses, I think we needed those. As, you know, this young team, this team that's just coming together, uh, I think we really needed those. You know, I don't really look at our wins as much as those losses as to credit what, you know, this team has gone through. I think that USC loss is probably most critical uh, coming together as a team and really learning what it's about to play as a team and not just as a group of individuals. Uh, you know, and then that Boise State loss, just to know you got to play all 40 minutes, you got to play every single second, or you, it's done. And then at Gonzaga to learn what the best team in the country plays like. Uh, so I think those, we've learned so much from those, and I think that's a credit of a good team. Uh, you know, just being able to learn from those losses. You know, a lot of teams just go and say, oh, we, we lost, this happened, and we're moving past it. But we're looking at those losses, we're seeing how can we improve. And that's, you know, another part of this team is getting better every single day. Okay, finally, tomorrow's a prep day for Pepperdine, and then you go back-to-back -back with Pep. Uh, here Saturday, there Wednesday, so unique setting to see a team that you'll get to know really well here over the next uh, 48 hours. Your thoughts on the weekend? Uh, you know, I think I think Pepperdine's a really good team. Uh, I don't know if their record shows it right now, but I think they have some very good, like very high-quality players. Of course, you know, Kessler Edwards is extremely talented at the four. Uh, they got a five-man that can really shoot the ball, of course, you know, led by Colby Ross at the point. I think they're a really talented team. Uh, I think they're a lot better than what they maybe have, have shown to a lot of people so yeah, far. I agree, yeah. Uh, but we're, you know, we're confident that we could come out of the win if we play together, if we play for us. Um, I think we're confident we come out of w with a win, but it's definitely a team we can't underestimate just by looking at the record. We know that they have, they have first team all WCC quality players. Well, I hope you guys springboard off this great second half uh, today into the weekend. Really fun to see the way this team came together and everything working the way it was. And so excited to see you. Uh, the way you played tonight at 9 for 9, as Coach was telling us off the air. Uh, Kresimir Chosic back in the day went 12 for 12. But for guys that have been able to make all those shots without a miss, 9 for 9 I think is the second best performance after that kind of night. So congrats to you, Matt, and the guys, and we'll see you on Saturday. Awesome. Thank you, guys. All right, that is Matt Harms. Mo Mark Pope is next here on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. It's time to get the final word on today's game with head coach Mark Pope. It's the BYU Dining Cougar Post Game Coaches Show. BYU Dining, the classic BYU tradition. Have a scoop today. The Cougar Post Game Coaches Show is also brought to you by Mountain America Credit Union. Mountain America, guiding members forward for more than 80 years. Now let's rejoin the voice of the Cougars, Greg Rubel. All right, the BYU improves to 12-3 on the season with a 95-67 home win over Portland. The Pilots still winless all-time in Provo at now 0-13. BYU goes to 3-1 and in league, in addition to being at 12-13 and over, uh, 12 and 3 overall. Head coach Mark Pope joining us now on the Cougar Postgame Coaches Show. Congratulations, Coach Pope, on win number 12 in game number 15 on this year. Thank you, brothers. Uh, I'm super proud of the guys tonight. Um, you know, a little bit shaky in the first half, trying to figure some things out. It was interesting. The game was just so different, right? We we were, I mentioned this earlier. We were um, 
in at St. Mary's in San Francisco, it was like you could punch a dude in the face and there was no foul. And then tonight it was just a way different whistle. It, but the whistle was consistent throughout the night. It was just took us a while to adjust to that, and it, it took us a while to adjust to the lack of physicality uh, to the game. But once we did, and I thought the guys executed really well. Thinking about this game is so different than the, the games you played in the last three or four games. But one of the things Portland did, it played a lot of zone. I don't know how much you work on that. How different is it uh, playing a zone for this team? Maybe thought some your thoughts on that. Yeah, it kind of twisted up a little bit. Um, you know, it's a, they were just, you know, as soon as Hand got in foul trouble, they were just so undermanned underneath. It just you really didn't have any size or any physicality. And so it's just um, – you know, it was uh, it, it kind of had us on our heels a little bit. We picked up a couple offensive fouls in the lane, and then we scored easy buckets inside, and it, it can trick you up. And uh, it just took us a little while to get uh, some rhythm. We haven't played against a team that's played zone in some time. And so it just took us a minute. I thought the guys responded really well and uh, began moving the ball. And, uh, you know, our big started occupying space in the middle of the lane rather than on the on the sides of the lane, which is playing much more in the zone's hand. And, and uh, so I was super pleased with it. You know, the one thing about zone for us is it, you know, we're, we were six assists versus uh, St. Mary's. And then, Greg, what were we uh, for San Francisco? I think we were 12 maybe. I mean, I think we had almost as many assists in this game as we did in the two previous games. And that's you, our comfort place. You, you went – 10 Gonzaga, 6 St. Mary's, 10 San Francisco. So, yeah. So, so you had 26 over three games and then yeah. 28 tonight. So, and it's just our happy place. So, I was actually grateful for the zone because as soon as we got comfortable, the ball started moving and we ended up with 28 assists. And that's actually, that's where we belong. It's just not what the teams we played recently, their whole scheme is to take right. it away. And so, this was actually a happy adjustment for us. Uh, hopefully, we can continue uh, moving the ball and sharing the ball because it makes a big difference for us and it makes us feel right and you know you know we you know we had 28 assists and we saw 43 percent from the three-point line i think we were at 48 before the last couple of minutes of the game and, and that's just those kind of go hand in hand with us and we're very much an inside out team we'll continue to be an inside out team but but you know as teams have to, they have to i mean it's hard to swallow you know it's it's easy to swallow a post catch here and post catch here but when matt harms goes nine for nine at some point you're like mm. That's you know that's two points per possession. <laughs> it's, it, with the three, it's like two point one points per possession. At some point, you're like, okay, we we probably got to bring a second defender, and and so um, it was it was really good for us, really therapeutic. I think we got better tonight, and it's important because we got a massive, massive challenge on Saturday. When you went from up nine three to down sixteen nine early, what were you telling the guys? Um, just listen, and then we went down again, right? So we just, it just is us. It's just us kind of feeling our way out. Um, you know, we actually, I actually liked us sort of the game. We were really aggressive. We had four or five shots right at the rim. They were a little bit rushed. The guys were a little bit overhyped. Uh, you know, Kobe grabbed a big time offensive rebound and then went to finish it one on four. Uh, Brandon Avery got in the lane and took a, a really, a couple really quick shots where he actually had guys open and it wasn't cause guys were selfish. It was just cause. You know, we had we we kind of come into these games with so much energy, and we wanted to punch somebody, but they wouldn't let us. It was it was illegal tonight, and so <laughs> we kind of had to bring it down a notch and finally figured it out. Are you okay being a second half team? Because you kind of you guys kind of are right now. Yeah, I mean, I, I love it. Uh, you know, I, I think I, I actually think that's where we're going to live. Our advantage is actually lying in the second half for a couple reasons. One is our depth, so we could just wear people out. It's one of the beautiful things about having depth. The other thing is with the depth we have, it's kind of finding the right matchups as the game is in process. been super proud of my staff and super proud of my players for making adjustments as we go along on one hand and on the other hand just wearing guys out. For us, it's a really good mix. And, um, you know, I'd like to – you know, be up 30 at halftime, but that doesn't happen very often for anybody besides the Zags. And so um, I, I'm super proud of these guys being, uh, you know, kind of having some real juice in the second half because it means the depth is working and it means that we're figuring things out. We talked about Matt Harms, great night, but all the big men, those four were 19 of 22 in this game. I thought Caleb maybe played his best game. And I think the progress of these, these big guys since the first couple of games, I'm like, I don't know. They are a dominant force right now. That's cool. Yeah, and they did it a different way. You know, it wasn't smash mouth basketball today. It was it was much more finesse. Um, it was much more like, you know, sometimes you're in there and you could throw your whole body through two guys, and sometimes it feels like if you even touch a guy, there's going to be a whistle. And so the guys did a great job adjusting. Like Caleb Lohner today, 
had a beautiful mix of physicality, like the offensive rebound put back that he grabbed down here, which he was just like a monster, and also some finesse. He had two big-time assists. They were just quick touch passes that were really terrific. Uh, I thought his game was terrific tonight, with the exception of the one time that he threw the ball right at Spencer Johnson's head. Spencer still has Spalding <laughs> on his forehead. Uh, it was like a dumb and dumber when the dude throws the snowballs or he's getting from two feet away, right? Uh, but he had a fantastic game. He's doing such a great job for us. Matt clearly was unbelievable. And Rich, you know, Rich found himself as, as we went through the game. And I thought Kobe's minutes were terrific. You know, Kobe... Kobe just settles us on the offensive end. He just, like, I can throw the ball in there. With Kobe, I can throw it into him, and I'm like, he's going to make the right decision. Okay. He's just going to make the right decision. And, in fact, I think uh, Trevin's first three was an assist from Kobe. Is that right, guys, the, the very first three of the yeah. game? And so it's just like, you know, it's, it's comforting us for, to, for him to be in the game, to start the game, just because he's going to make the right decision on offense in a calming way. I was proud of him tonight also. So, yes, super happy with all the bigs tonight. We'll take a break. Coach Mark Pope is with us. His team defeats Portland by a score of 95-67. to We'll tell you what happened in the rest of the WCC tonight and conclude our comments with the coach next on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. You're listening to the Cougar Post Game Coaches Show on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. Now back to the voice of the Cougars, Greg Rubel. Well, it was a night of career nights uh, for BYU. Matt Harms, BYU career high, 23 points. Three off his all-time high. Had 26 in a game for Purdue back in the day. So Matt had 23. Then you have uh, the career high six assists for Caleb Lohner to go with, along with six boards and nine points. And then A.B. pulls up with a 10-8 and six points, rebounds, and assists. A lot of big games from a lot of different guys, Coach. Yeah, uh, you know, this is Alex Barcelo. I mean, come on. You know, he, he, just, he just is a winner, right? Um, he's got he's got that quality that Jake had last year. Where, listen, if if the game is telling him that he's going to be a six assist one turnover guy and that's his deal, he's going to do it. If the game's saying, hey, I need you to go grab eight rebounds, he's going to do it. If you know if the game's telling him, you know, he's he's going to go score, he's going to go score, and he just is. Um, he's he's the guy that you want on your team. He's the guy that actually is is going to forge an opportunity for himself to continue playing for a long time because. He's not a one-trick pony. He just answers the bell with the game. And as a coach and a GM and and uh, a scout, that's what you want. You want a guy that can come in the game and just do whatever the game is requiring yeah. of them. I'm so proud of him. And and like I said, you know, the Caleb Zoner's numbers were unbelievable. He's six and two. I mean, six assists, two turnovers. That's spectacular. And like I said, this guy is going to continue to just explode on the floor. I thought he was terrific defensively with the exception of two switches in high ball screens that got us in trouble. I thought he was terrific defensively, and he put up great offensive numbers. And, you know, Rich goes five for five, and uh, there's just a lot of great performances from guys. Connor Harding, I thought, had a terrific night. You know, he's he's three for five from the three-point line and has four rebounds and really steadied us. When he went in the game in the first half, it just kind of made us feel a little bit okay. Uh, so we had a lot of great great performance. Hey, I, when I saw Brandon War in uniform, I thought, well, something's happened. And you got – so tell us what happened there. With so, yeah, he got a waiver. Had it, to have gotten. Yeah, and we started pursuing As soon as they said that everybody got a free year, we kind of went to them. So they said, hey, just give us a crack at it because he's working so hard every day. Excuse me. Um, he's working so hard every day. And uh, it was it was great for him to be, have, be in a BYU uniform and get on the floor, and he grabbed two rebounds. And so uh, he's officially in the stat forevermore, and, <laughs> and I'm really happy for him. And I, listen, I thought Jesse Wade, he only played three minutes and 12 seconds. He's just kind of got back from some stuff, and, and I thought he did an unbelievable job keeping his dribble alive. He was really solid defensively in those three minutes and, and was actually a plus three. It's hard when you put a whole new crew in for the last two and a half minutes of the game to actually have a positive plus minus, and they managed to do it. They were plus three as a group. I'm super proud of them. Yeah, really nice team win tonight. And the, the second half was particularly good. You mentioned some of the things about a second half team. I'm just curious as a coach, what do you do at, at halftime, like for today's game? Do you huddle with the coaches and talk about certain adjustments, or how do you approach 
your halftime conversation with the team? Yeah, so we do exactly the sa- same thing every every game. We'll go, uh, head straight to the players go to players' locker room. Uh, we go to the coaches' locker room. I'll vent for 20 seconds uh, <laughs> with all of my frustration, and then it's just straight constructive. And so the assistants get together, and they'll verbally out loud uh, offensive and defensive keys and adjustments of what we need to do. They'll, they'll do that while I'm kind of like letting my brain go. Then we'll all talk about them as a group, figure it out, and then we go present them to the team, say, hey, these are the changes we need. These are the things we need to stay with, and these are the things we have to focus on in the second half, and then these guys come out and do it. So it's, there's nothing, no rocket science to it. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a pretty condensed time for everything that, that we have happen, but it's been effective for us. Okay, uh, you'll prep tomorrow for pep, prep for pep, and then you get back-to-back with the Waves. Yes, and uh, like I said, you know, I mean, I think everybody, every prognosticator thought they would be a top three team in this league this year, um, and they're so incredibly talented. And they're actually, um, you know, um, Portland doesn't have a, a ton of depth right now. Uh, they're a good team, but they really are effective at spacing the floor. And now we're going to team that do, play a team that does exactly the same thing, except they have at least two pros on the team and maybe more with unbelievable length, size down low, depth, uh, they are a problem in this league. And they had a couple, like, super strange games in the non-conference that made everybody kind of stop thinking about them. I'm telling you, they're a problem. They're incredibly talented, well-coached. Lorenzo does a great job, and, and uh, it's going to be a massive game on Saturday. we got to come and play. they got a win tonight at home over Pacific, 85-68. to St. Mary's finally got their first win in the league, went on the road, won at LMU. Elm, you'd already beaten USF. That was 65-61. You guys got your win, and uh, late, 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 uh, USF's going to beat Santa Clara. They're up 21 with three minutes to go uh, down in Santa Cruz because they're not playing at home, and Gonzaga was off tonight um, as well. So that's the league right now, and uh, it's tough to draw too many conclusions right now about where this thing's going to go. Yeah, and it's just hard. I mean, think about it. We just did at Gonzaga, at uh, St. Mary's, at San Francisco, which you think is super hard, and now we're going to go – Pepperdine at Pepperdine, San Francisco. That's ridiculously hard, too. <laughs> like, there's no – this league is really good. I mean, it, you know, we're, we're going to end up with six teams in the top 120 in the net, and I don't know how many conferences can say that. And so it's – it's uh, you got to bring in every night. you got to keep getting better, and I, I think that's what our guys are doing. All right, 12-3 uh, and three through 15 games. We'll let you go with that. And realizing that uh, in the last 10 seasons, no BYU teams ever had a better 15-game record then 12 and 3. And in this season of all seasons, getting 15 in and then winning 12, I mean, kudos to you guys. Yeah, it's, it's a credit to our guys, man. They're, they're really working and, and uh, they're, they're fighting every day to do this for each other. And, and that's a, a pretty special recipe that if we can keep staying there, then we have a chance to have a great season. All right, let's do it again Saturday. Thanks, Coach. Thanks, guys. All right, that is Mark Pope. We'll come back and wrap it up on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. You're listening to the Cougar Post Game Coaches Show on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. Now back to the voice of the Cougars, Greg Rubel. All right, closing our broadcast for tonight to BYU defeating Portland by a score of 95-67. to BYU improves to 3-1 in the WCC, 12-3 overall. Next up, BYU and Pepperdine, 8 o'clock tip with a 7 o'clock radio pregame Saturday night right back here at the Marriott Center. Thanks to our crew back at BYU Radio for getting us and keeping us on the air tonight. Our engineers, Sean Fay and Barry Squires, our coordinating producer, Terry South, our control board operator, Joshua Sturgill, our interns tonight to Andrew Gray and Kevin Hatch, and, of course, our studio host, he's the great Jason Shepard. Courtside, I was joined by my color commentary colleague, Mr. Mark Durant. Our thanks to uh, John McBride of BYU Athletic Communications for also assisting us on this evening, and to our postgame guests, Matt Harms, and, of course, the head coach of the Cougars, Mark Pope. Coach Pope tonight improves to 36-11 and 11 at BYU, 113-67 and 67 for his overall career coaching record. And, again, BYU has now won 12 of its first 15 games on this season. Good stuff. All right, that's going to do it for tonight. Back with you Saturday night, 7 o'clock pregame, 8 o'clock tip for BYU and Pepperdine. First of back-to-backers against the Waves as BYU will play in Malibu next Wednesday. So for all the aforementioned, my name is Greg Rubel. Thanking you for tuning in, by the way, to the BYU Creamery Cougar Postgame Coaches Show, the classic BYU tradition. Have a scoop today at the BYU Creamery. So in the meantime and in between time, this has been BYU Basketball on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. Good night and so long from Provo, Utah.